previously on the NoVP channel. And the mop snapped in half. And coming up. I've got my hole. I find you very rude. <laughs> The Novimpia Chanel is made possible by our gorgeous patrons who get access to the most unappealing crap you'll find anywhere on the whole internet. Cue the snafu! Yes, hello, bloody hell yes. Welcome to this Novimpia treat for the ages. I'm Nova. No, no that's wrong, isn't it? That <laughs> genuinely confused me for a minute. I was like, what are you talking about? Because you're very, very stupid. No. I'm Bridget Jones. <laughs> No. I said make this snappy and we've immediately not listened to our own uh, rules. Oh, so today, oh, today let's just get into it. We're just going to get straight into this. This is a let's Halloween. Just dive in. Halloween decorating video. We've got several things going on. Mm. I'm about to jump off and get everything out of the garage. We're going to go through all our old Halloween decorations. We've got a couple of projects that we'd like to uh, have you come along with yes, for the ride. Yes, we some spooky arts and crafts this year. So whilst I'm fanning around with old decorations, Nova is going to be upgrading, painting, changing the hair, tarting up a six foot animated animatronic witch that I we mean, purchased. animatronic, they, they saw us coming. Yeah, you know. it's, but it's good now. I'm going to be creating a Samara climbing out of the TV from the ring kind of animatronic prop situation. We're going to be painting the, the magic mixy cauldron. Yes, thing. we're going there's, to be repurposing that. So I think that's going to be very exciting. There's so much we want to show you. So let's just get into it now. So our garage is a disaster area. We've never had a garage before and it just was very exciting and we filled it with all kinds of crap. I'm gonna have to get Nova to deal with all the Halloween stuff though, because it's right at the back and look at all of those cobwebs. Spider webs, not happy about that. Here's me looking really attractive. I think there's probably about six or so crates in this garage that we pulled out, a few bags, loads of crap. And then I found this small broomstick. Do you know, getting all this shit out for the first time, nothing makes me feel more alive. Just got crates of wings. I don't even know what half this stuff is. I think that was Lisa Scott Lee in a former life. This was my blue hair from the first. This wine tastes like crap. This is a great acquisition for this year. We got this from TK Maxx or TJ Maxx, if you call it that, or Home Sense. It's all the same thing. It's these three skulls. I think they're made of like plaster. It was like 60 quid. So it's a bit ostentatious, but it lights up and it's just delightful, I think. I mean, I don't know which one, what's in which box. Oh, this guy's good. I'd forgotten about him. Oh. Here's me putting it on the wall. I know it looks like it's stone, so it's supposed to be outside, but you didn't want to put animatronics outside if they're not intended to go there. So this is exactly how she looks out of the box. I'm just laying out the witch herself and all of her parts. It was almost like a Christmas tree stand and um, she came like, quite frightening with her arms crossed. She looked quite good straight out of the box but there was a really visible like mould seam in the middle of her face which I straight away wanted to change. And we were also thinking, we weren't too keen about her hands because they looked kind of cheap compared to the rest of her. We've named her, well, someone on, on Twitch called her Gruntilda, which we really liked. So Tilda for short. I want this to be like, obviously she's, she's like offering the apple. Yes, she is. And then maybe this can be like, motioning stage right. <laughs> very, very slow moving. She doesn't move much, but she doesn't really move much. Her neck moves a bit. So here I am removing the hat, which has been rather crudely glued onto her scalp. She has got, it looks like, a full head of hair. Oh no, it stops underneath. Oh bless her. So her hat is off. Here's the hat. And I didn't realise that there was like a wire coming out of her head to like make the hat a bit more poseable. And this is where the hat was. It's And it's just like two, like a, like a bow of this flap. Let me zoom out a little bit. It's just like glued on. And I can't pull this off. This is glued in pretty well. So I'm gonna get some scissors and just cut it off and then um, see what we're dealing with. They had actually accidentally glued some of these cables into the hat there. I don't know if that's going to affect her movement at all, but they're now free and they're just kind of like stuffed into the back of her head. But I mean, don't she look like a wrinkly old testicle from the back? Like what's going on there? Literally just a bollock. It's a very interesting seam on this upon closer inspection. So obviously it's up in the middle, up in the middle, up in the middle. 
and then it gets to the brow and I can follow it around here, kind of across the eye and then it hops on the back here. It looks like it's maybe three, three pieces put together. So I'm trying with just some regular sandpaper here to do this on the chin. It is working, it's gonna take a while though. So I think that's as good as we're gonna get like sanding down that seam. It looks pretty bad now because I've taken off like half the paint, but I do think that's gonna be much better um, when we paint it. So now I'm gonna take some acrylic paints and I'm not gonna prime it or anything. I'm just gonna work on top of what is already here. We'll be back to Nova soon. Oh, now it's more of me. These were a great little find in the range. In fact, I think we bought another one. So there's like a, a set, like a little trio of them now for this year. And you just put little candles in them. I knew we got another one. So now there's the three of them. Another little addition here, our new front doormat. Isn't that cute? That's from TK Maxx. I mean, we have a creepy doormat anyway, but this feels more appropriate to put there for Halloween. Oh, I might have to pressure, pressure wash that away. If you've got a staircase like this, Super cheap, easy way of just like making it look sick as. These like plastic garlands, they weren't that expensive. Um, just to like wrap it around the, whatever you call these, spindle? I don't know what they're called. We usually just have black ones, but we found these in the range. How cool are they? Red ones with eyeballs in them. And obviously, put LEDs in them. I mean, again, I think these orange LEDs were from like the pound shop or something. Super cheap, really cack. Putting a really cheap, crappy plastic skull on the foot of your staircase really adds a lot of glamour. And I love autumnal leaves, that sign's cheap. We've got so many things that we buy for Halloween and then just leave up because it's our aesthetic anyway. It's what I would call all year rounders. This flower pot situation down here. Basically our entire fireplace was stuff that we attended to put out for Halloween and then it just stuck around. These candlesticks, these kind of like death moth, silence of the lambs candlesticks that we put on either side of the bar. Brand new acquisition. We found this bell jar in the range and I just had to have it regardless of Halloween or not. It's gonna end up in my drag room after Halloween because I just love it and it lights up and it's just cack. I got this typewriter years ago, but we got it out for um, like a scavenger hunt, like a horror themed scavenger hunt. At a Halloween party we had once and it was kind of the shining adjacent and we've literally just left the text in there because we love it because we're such tarts for it. This was from Asda. This this painting, this like fake painting that lights up, again, came out for Halloween, never went back in the box. Don't make me do it. This is how to place a rug down. Bath time will never be the same again. So here I am channeling the Poppin Atelier. We're doing a doll repainting video. Um, no, so the, the initial paint was okay, but I wanted to really bring out the crevices and really darken the eyes. So I'm using acrylic paints here and I'm basically using blacks and browns. I'm painting on quite a thick layer and then using kitchen roll to rub off, just leaving the darkest shadows in the crevices. I think this is looking really, really cool. I'm just using like a mixture of burnt umber and phthalo blue, phthalo blue, I don't know. And it's made this kind of like very, very, very almost black teal color. And then I'm using that in combination with the burnt umber. And I'm just bringing out like all the wrinkles in her face and I've made around her eyes a lot darker. So I'm gonna do that for the rest of her face now, like the jowls and the chin, and then we'll tackle the mouth, which I think is gonna be very transformative. We're gonna get some actual black in there. It's looking so good, I'm really happy with it. The mouth I think looks amazing. I just wanna give her some lippy now. So I've got some violet over here and I'm going to give her, cause she had purple lipstick before. So I'm just gonna try and go over that. I'm really amused by how you just said lippy. Yeah. Get a lippy. Yeah, that looks nice, doesn't it? We'll fuck that up a bit afterwards as well, because this is a bit too perfect. So I'm gonna get on it like a base coat and then we'll make it look a bit like she's nushed off a demon. <gasps> so here's the final paint job. I'm just like straddling her, don't mind me. <laughs> I think the mouth looks so much better now. Actually, looking at this now, I could brighten up the middle bit a little bit because it looks a bit like it's got a forked turn. Yes, hello, yes. So I've always wanted to create and have, in our house for Halloween, a Samara climbing out of the TV prop from The Ring. So this is oh, very experimental. It might not work at all, but I have everything here. I'm gonna try and put this together now. So I'll show you how to do it. So I procured this plastic crate from B&Q, but it's got 
the base of it is still there and I need light to pass all the way through it. So I'm gonna saw that off. Here's me looking really attractive. So I sawed the bottom of this, it took about 15 minutes to do it. It was a bit of an arse ache. So if you're not used to using a saw, then make an adult do it. Put down some protective, so I think they're cat litter liners or something. This spray paint would not come out of the can. I don't know what was wrong with it, but it did the job just to make it look like one of those old school TVs. Spraying it, this is me just spraying it now. I'm just spraying it, spraying it. Okay, so my TV in quotes is is done. I think when the screen is in front of it, it will look a bit more like a TV. I didn't want to use cardboard because it could like collapse. So I don't know if it's gonna go outside. So this dude here I got on eBay. I won him in an auction. I thought because the hands were kind of perfect and it kind of sways from side to side. Let's have a quick look. The sound isn't great. Okay, his eyes light up, but then you're not gonna see the eyes, so it doesn't really matter. The sound's not ideal. We don't love having animatronics with sound because there's so much music and shit going on, you can't ever really hear it anyway, but I think it'll be good. So what I'm gonna try and do is glue this base in here. The moment this is balanced on the, I want to be a, what is it? I want to be a sofa lampshade just to have it off the ground, but I'll come up with a more permanent solution for that afterwards. I'm going to take this shower curtain material. It's like a translucent, but it project, you can project stuff onto it really well. Cover that to make a scream. Have the dude coming out of it. I've got a wig. I've got, a, I did a Samara cosplay once. So I've got the hair and I've got the dress. And then I'm going to try and project behind. So it looks like it's actually a TV, but this is all in my mind. This projector is probably the cheapest you can get off Amazon. It was like 20 quid, but I'm sure it will do the job just fine. Here's me using a glue gun. And I'm literally like jamming my fingers into this plastic to make it as taut as possible. But I've used a glue gun for so many years that I know how to kind of do that without burning myself. So if you're new to using a glue gun, don't do what I'm doing right now. I was worried that the sheet would melt, but it held up. It held up pretty good, so we're all good. Okay, so I have done this now it's taut enough i think that it's gonna work with having a projector behind it it did dawn on me though that it looks i don't know if it looks a bit flat or not i made this like crappy cardboard thing which i'll spray black and maybe that will make it look a little bit more like one of those old batty tvs unless that just makes it look a microwave i don't know okay so while the i painted that strip button thing black whilst that's drying i'm going to test the viability of this projector i'm going to basically just stick it behind this open back just here see if it works. If it's super close and blurry and terrible, I can always just print out a picture of the well scene and have it be backlit anyway, but we'll see how we go. I'm sorry, but I'm literally a genius. Look at that. <laughs> I can't have a look. Oh, that's amazing. Works. You're gonna get like a wire coat hanger with like an antenna on the top. But well, I've made TV. some like buttons. I guess I could I do know, that. I thought it was a bit crazy. If you get a wire coat hanger and do like antenna, then it's instantly like, this is a TV set. Do we have any? But. Ta -da! I think it looks enough. <laughs> it looks enough like an old TV. For me to say that it's sort of done. I think the, the rounded bits here just kind of make it. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is maybe just make a slit down here, try and pass it through. Um, slit. I might have to cut a bit more of this. So I just used an old knife to do this. It does not take much pressure to kind of cut through this fabric. It's really flimsy. And this part was, it worked just about the way I had intended. I had to put a small slit in the top just to make sure that kind of like battery pack would go in. And then I glued the absolute shit to the bottom of it. And the glue gun adhered to that plastic crate and the fabric so well, I'm sure it'll be fine. What even is this? Like, what is it for? <laughs> So I'm putting the Samara dress on my zombie person. I had envisioned maybe gluing this on or kind of manipulating it a bit, but literally just draping it on seems to work. And again, I was gonna glue the, the wig to the head, but then putting the wig on, it just stayed and it's all good. So I can still reuse that. No, I'm sorry, but that is so sick. Look at the state of it. I feel like the weight of it's actually made it a bit slower, which is better because it was too fast before. The um, sound is obviously terrible. I'm going to try and dampen that sound of the zombie, but I still think it works. For her hair, we've bought some hair extensions. So I'm just going to glue these on. 
I'm never going to use all of these. And then I think what I'm going to do is crimp them and brush them out so they're a bit frizzy. Maybe put some like black acrylic paint through some of it and razor cut it a bit just so it's a bit fuckity. But this will look so much more like hair than the fluff that was like glued to her beforehand. So I've glued three like wefts of hair extensions around her head, which immediately looks so much better. The length makes a big difference, but I'm not quite happy with this shiny texture. So this is like the fresh extension glued on. And then here I've crimped it. I've brushed it out. I've teased it a bit, just sliced into it with a knife. And I think that is gonna look so cool. Does this make you miss doing hair? No. She's a witch, but she's also from like the 90s. Was that a 90s trend? 80s, 90s. So it looks like crimped at the moment, but you'll see in a minute. And then... So it automatically goes... Gandalf. Fluffier. Yeah. That is a lot more the vibe for Tilda. I've been really struggling to, to paint these um, to match her face because they're so much like pinker and like darker. So I decided to... Also, like, the proportion of the fingers are weird. Like on the front, they look kind of short and then on the back, they're like normal length. So I've put in like some shading in between the fingers to increase the length of the fingers. And then I've also decided to make the, the tips of the fingers like a like a black green kind of color. I thought that that elongated them a bit. I put on some false nails on this hand and now I think this one looks pretty good. I'm gonna do the same for this one and then we're gonna try and attach them and see how it looks. One of them is gonna be holding the apple, which is here. And I think it's actually just hot glued on. I'm, if I, I bet I can just like rip it off. Will it come off? Oh, do we see it's like screwed on. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Oh, it's a real long screw. Oh, wow. Okay, and there is a little bit of hot glue here. We have the apple. Not too much damage to it. Nothing a red Sharpie can't fix. I love patching up things with a red Sharpie. So, nice big blob of hot glue there. I want to try and find the side that's got like a bit of yellow on it. So that's kind of like here. And then we're just going to plonk it into the middle. Et voila. So here's the arm. Um, I've just hot glued it along the edge here. What I'm thinking is I've got some of this spooky fabric here. I'm going to add some of this here somehow. It looks so good. So I'm going to dull this green in a moment, but this is what we have under here. I've just folded up this spooky fabric and kind of glued it underneath this top piece of material. So that comes down. So we've got a little bit more fabric and texture in the whole costume, but then it does cover up this kind of seam here. And when you drape over the green sleeve again, boom. So now onto some maybe more sophisticated items that we like to pepper around our house. Um, that we got from various places and they're not really that expensive. So this witch was from HomeSense. I think she was like 14 quid. They're really good at like Halloween decorations that are like ornamental and they'll like last for a long time. I think we called her Zelda and her cauldron lights up. Really cute, nice one. The pumpkin is great. This is from The Range and I just love how vintage it looks. Anything old school, I think it looks really great with the LEDs. Again, I think we got change out of a tenner for that. These goblets were from, but what's it called? Home Bargains, and they were 99p a go. Like, we'll get loads of those and pepper those around. The candles were three pounds from Pound Stretcher. They're black on the outside, but the inside's red, so it's like bleeding candles. Um, they're just some old candlesticks that we had. This dude was from HomeSense. I think it's like a Red Riding Hood thing, but it just, it was cheap, but it looks expensive, and I can guarantee he's gonna stay up for a while. All of our backdrops are from buybackdrop.com. So the Blair Witch one that we used the other day is also, all of our backdrops are from there, but they do some really great stuff. And uh, especially for Halloween. And there's this nice guy in the corner here. I don't know what he's doing though. So this under the stairs is our downstairs bathroom. And whilst it is a very, very small space, excuse the fan, this is an area that we never like to overlook whilst decorating for Halloween because it's obviously an area that's going to be frequented quite a lot by our guests. So I'm just going to show you, apart from the cute little hand towel here, very simple way to make this immediately look spooky and Halloween-y. 
cute mirror here, just a cute mirror, nothing special about this at all, nothing at all. I love these stickers because they are so good at transforming bathrooms and kitchens and they're so, so easy and they're completely removable. So this is what we're going to do for the downstairs bathroom. We're going to basically stick these all over the tiles. Ah, oh, need a piss? Why not use our downstairs lavatory? There's an axe here for if you require to cut your toenails, etc. <gasps> Footprints on, on the ceiling. The stairs are on the other side of that, so I think that is kind of cool. And, you know, don't use this toilet paper. One of our favourite props is this purchase that we made from Wilkinson's a few years ago. And this is always the crowd favourite. And he normally lives here. And we need some blue tack to staple it because you can see that's a little bit wobbly. But it is a animatronic clock and it's motion sensor. <laughs> So because he's motion sensor, he basically goes up every time someone goes up the stairs to use the main bathroom. <laughs> but he's so cool! This nail up here literally serves no purpose except to hang. It's like my favourite thing that we have and it's cute! I Look love at this! Him. And now for some Novimpia classics. This Victorian, the others inspired post-mortem photograph of Nova and I, dead as you like. This doorbell, which people seem to think works as a real doorbell, but we can only vaguely hear it. <laughs> Nova and I literally hate children, apart from the one night of the year when we'll offer them candy, which is Halloween. And it's fun when they come to the door and you scare the absolute shit out of them and their costumes are terrible, but we always like to make sure we have this entire bowl filled with, it has to be Halloween themed candy. And every single year, we just never buy enough of it. Let's see how Nova's getting on. So next step is I'm going to try and stop this green being so violently green. I'm just gonna sponge on some paint over it just to kind of like, Calm it down a bit. Oh yeah, that's immediately better. Okay, so progress update. I have found some spooky fabric just to lay it over the top of that green. I did try to paint it. I still could not hide the fact that it was so fucking like neon, but I think the gray helps tone it down a little bit. And it, again, it's just more layers, it's more textures, and I think it looks really cool. Added some old jewelry that we had. I think we were actually gifted these very kindly. So now they belong to the witch. There's a little ring on here and a bracelet. The next thing is I need to stuff her torso and her waist a little bit and then add a belt on. And then I'm gonna tart up the hat a little bit. We've also found an old costume piece that Olympia built when she went as the Blair Witch. I'm thinking we, if we can try and use that somehow, that could be really cool. Okay, Olympia has just found this old cushion stuffing in the garage. This is gonna be amazing. What I'm gonna do is stick this pole, like hot glue it here. I'm gonna fold this in half as a sandwich and then that is gonna just go on top of the stand and that's gonna give her a body. I'm so excited this is gonna work. I'm sure this is gonna work. So this plan worked really well, but it, we straight away noticed that she had like a really big hump back and not in like a characteristic way. So um, I filed off maybe like 30 centimeters off the edge and that slimmed her down perfectly. It worked so well. She has a waist. I think that has made such a difference, you know, like, it like it just makes her look like she's got a body. I've just safety pinned this belt on. So she's got a little safety pin there, there, and then behind. But oh my gosh, it looks so good. Okay, so now um we need to pop the hair in the front and have a look at the hat. But she's almost done. Okay, that was very challenging to do. I had Olympia help me with that. But we managed to get 
the Blair Witch crown secured on the hat. I think she looks absolutely amazing now. She's quite scary. She's leaning quite a bit. But if I give her like a little move, she sways, but she doesn't go anywhere. I think maybe for the party, just for a bit of added insurance, we're going to add duct tape around these joints. But we are going to shove her in a corner of a room. So maybe if we can kind of like have her wedged a little bit as well, that won't be so much of a problem. The last thing I'm going to do is I've got um, this creepy crawly pack. And I've got like loads of bugs in here. And I'm going to put some of those I think like in her hair because her hair reminds me of like cobwebs yeah do you see that's gonna look so good if I just kind of like do this kind of action yeah that looks amazing so we're gonna do some of that now maybe like another one just in the corner here she's finished I put bugs in her hair she's got a little beetle climbing up her arm and I put a little bug on the apple as well but if you go boop <laughs> oh, oh right to your laugh. Oh, her head moves more now. Her head definitely moves more. It was caught on something. There are just so many ways of buying inexpensive Halloween decorations that just literally like elevate a room, and I think these. They're like two pounds a go, but if you get the whole set, I mean, it just looks sick. Oh, thinking of leaving so soon? If you go now, you might miss Charmaine getting wasted and falling over the garden sofa. <laughs> this is our Halloween wreath that's gonna go on the door this year. This is from um, Home Scent. It did have a glittery boo on the top there that we have taken off and then in the range, got these lights, which we're gonna wrap around the top here. These lights are so much longer than I thought they were gonna be, so I've been wrapping it around, but I think I'm gonna try and put some in the bottom here and use like hair grips to kind of like connect the cable to this like plastic leafage. I love these lights, they're so cute. I've done my best to try and like wrap them round with some kind of symmetry, but it's easier said than done. It was difficult trying to like work around all of this stuff actually in the wreath. I've hidden the battery pack here. I don't even know what colour these lights are, but let's have a look and see what colour they are. Oh, they're just like a warm white light. <gasps> that looks so good. I have this Sharpie here, which I have tried out on a little piece of paper, and I think it's going to be a fairly good match. So let's just see. It's only a few little spots, but it's just very, very annoying. Um, like... Oh, that works perfectly. Anybody else who is renting their home and you're a bit scared about nailing things into the walls or sticking things down and messing up decor, Command strips are your absolute best friend. They're completely removable. And that is how we're going to attach the reason to the front door. Oh, why don't you just shut up first of all? How cute is shut that? your I mouth, love these lights. Yeah, they look, they look great. They're so that looks sick. All oh, the neighbours are going to come out any seconds, aren't they? And congratulate us on such a great ring. I've patched up their little pumpkins. Oh, yeah, you good. We realised today, though, that this is now visible through the glass panel in our front door and it looks kind of ugly. So, now we came out with, let's just put last year's one on the inside. Cute, cute. Next task is to make use of the Magic Mixies cauldron. I've emptied it out. Scylla is safe and sound. I want to spray paint this with this hammered black finish spray paint. Can you see like the texture on it? I think that's gonna look really, really cool. And then I've got some silver paint to dry brush it because there are like different textures on here like the design i'd quite like to bring that out with a silver paint i'm going to mask and tape up the jewel on the front so we can keep that intact and then once it's all painted i've got a mini mister i'm going to see 
how we can get that to work inside here. I reckon we could put like a bowl of water sitting in here and have the mister sitting inside here. Maybe drill a hole through the back of it so the cable can go through. I don't know, I need to look at the mister and see, but um, painting first. It's looking really cool. Quite difficult to do though, because it's such a weird shape. So I'm hoping this is gonna look pretty cool. I want to try and like bring out some of these swirls. This is the silver paint that I'm using. This is my brush. Let's just have a little go at it and see what happens. So it might look a bit thick to begin with, but I am gonna be wiping most of this away. I think that looks really cool. If you compare it to the back that hasn't had this treatment, it's very just like glossy and plain black. And this makes it look a bit more like pewter. I'm gonna carry on with the rest of it, but I'm really happy with how this has turned out. Oh, that looks so good. I used lots of little pieces for this, so this might take a little while. Oh, oh. That looks so good. I'm obsessed with that. Okay, next up then is to sort out the mist machine. Now, this is going to fit inside this glass, which is going to sit in here like that, filled with water. And then here is the mist machine and it's going to sit in here and I tested it out and it lights up and mists really, really cool. But what we need to do is drill a hole just in the inside here so this cable can feed through. So I'm gonna do that now. But look at how nice the cauldron looks. I've got my hole drilled here now. So the next thing I need to do is just cut this connector off, thread the wire through the hole, and then just connect up the like internal wires in here and tape that up with some electrical tape. And then we'll be good to go. So there's two little cables, so I'm going to focus, inside this wire. One of them has got a, um, I think it's a green, a green casing and one's got a brown casing. I need to expose the wires on both ends, twist them round together, and then tape up with some electrical tape. That's the join here. Let's see if it works and I haven't just broken it. This glass, I don't know if it's because of the shape of it, but when I put the mister inside, it splashes quite a lot, which isn't a problem because obviously there's like a well inside this toy so it can collect the water, but can you see it's sitting in a puddle? So I just had an idea of using a tint bowl instead. That seems like it will fit in. However, I'm going to have to try and cut off this lip here. It's quite thick plastic, so I might try and like saw it off. It's still splashing, even with the tint bowl in there. I just end up snapping off that lip in the end. I'm not sure what's going to be best for this. At the moment, I think the tint bowl looks better but the mister is not as submerged in the water as it would be the glass. So I'm gonna do some research to see what is better, but this is the final result. What a transformation. So as soon as the water drops below, it stops misting. We're gonna to have to go with the glass then. This has been a little bit of trial and error. I'm not gonna lie with the functionality of it. So I've ended up with a soup bowl inside. This thing consumes water a lot faster than I was imagining. And as soon as the level goes down below the sensor, it stops misting. So you need a fair amount of water. This is the largest container I could fit in here. It almost fits the entirety of the cauldron. Um, I also hadn't considered that the mist in an atomizer is just water. So wherever the mist lands, it makes things wet. Can you see there's little mist droplets all over this? So we're gonna have to be very mindful where this cauldron ends up. Um, because it's going to get things wet. I, I did hear some people discuss maybe using dry ice. That's something that I've never used before and might be a solution to this problem. But for now, you get the idea. This used to be a Magic Mixies and now it's a mystical, magical cauldron. Listen, there's so much more that we want to show you and we will eventually, but first it's dinner time on our new Halloween plates. I mean, I hope you enjoyed that sort of journey through the 
utter crap. We need to throw some of that stuff out. If you guys are desperate for a house walkthrough of the final product, we will be posting one on Patreon after our Halloween party. Then you'll be able to see the table set, all the lights done up, the bar all set up, like everything all ready. What you gonna do with all that ash? We also have Twitch. No. <laughs> We're... We're also on Twitch. We have it. We do have it. We are on it though. And also follow updates about our costumes, etc., on our social media, which you can find right here. Just at the moment, just right here. That's nice, isn't it? Um. Also, speaking of Patreon, some of those guys get birthday shout-outs. They do. Including... But not limited to... For October 3rd, it's Carolyn's birthday. Happy birthday, Happy Carolyn. Happy birthday, Carolyn. Happy birthday. For October 5th, it's cookie cream pie. <laughs> Oh no. No, that's fine. We can. We don't have to go and blur that. That's fine. All right. Happy yep. birthday, Cookie. October 6th, it is Philip and Masaki's birthdays. Happy birthday, Philip and Masaki. Happy birthday, the pair of you. And it's Marcel for October 7th. Oh. Happy birthday, Marcel. Happy birthday, Marcel, the shell with shoes on. Um, oh my God. Is that out yet? I don't know, but I want to see that. See that. Um, Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. We have got more Halloween content coming your way for the month of October, and we are very excited. We're very into this. This is kind of like our deal. So yeah, come along for the ride. We're gonna be doing pumpkin carving next week. Mm. Then after that, we've got the return of the Grim Tour of Bournemouth, and the trailer's gonna drop for the feature length horror movie that we are producing, which is gonna come out at the end of the of the month, the end of October. And more importantly, we're doing the sequel to the Magic Mixes. <laughs> The magic mix, oh, for fuck's sake. And a happy Halloween to Raina Valera, Claire Wood, Potato, Shans, Alex Tomatoes, Logan Walker Graves, Mel's Tally, Michael McCann, Sean Roach, and Malin. Gruntilda. Oh, she's had a hair transplant. She's had some makeup. No, just put some lippy on her. Oh, it's cheap, though, isn't it? No. Yeah. Join the Patron, we'll do a shot of Patron. <laughs>